Hey guys, buckle up for another episode of Below the Iceberg, the one and only podcast where we talk to real life two comma club winners. Whether you're a small business owner, an entrepreneur, a wannabe entrepreneur, or you've been in business for a while, you're sure to pick up tidbits of actionable advice from these million dollar entrepreneurs. Now, if you don't know what a two comma club winner is, it's where they have built one funnel inside the ClickFunnels software and they have sold $1 million through just that one funnel, which is just an absolutely fantastic achievement. Now, in today's episode, I'm super, super excited to be talking with Jeffrey Bannock, who catapulted himself into a multi-million dollar business and he has achieved three two comma club awards and he even has a click funnels tattoo how awesome so let's dive in and find out how he did it and all the unexpected things that happened on his path to that coveted million dollar funnel so welcome jeffrey thanks so much for having me i appreciate it uh thank you for taking your time out of your day to come and chat with me today no oh, awesome yeah and I want to super congratulate you on getting two comma club award. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's my I third see. one finally back there. You have three on your wall at the back. So, yeah, I've got the end in the eight figure award too for hitting 10 million. You've got that as well. Yeah, uh, my very first funnel I did this guy right here. Uh, we launched that May 17th, 2017. Uh, when we launched that one, it did 1.2 million in 57 days, where at that time, that was the fastest. Anyone had hit a million with ClickFunnels, um, there was a big to-do with that one. That funnel went on to do uh, uh, 10 million in under 18 months, and uh, I think it's done about like 22 since then. Awesome. That's amazing. Fabulous. So what I like to do with my guests is a little bit of digging on their stats. Sure. So then my listeners can see what people's followings are like on social media, because it's not always about massive followings. So I did a little bit digging on you. I found you got a YouTube channel with about 750 subscribers. Yeah, that was my old Funnel Doc channel. Yep. Yep. I thought so. Instagram, about 1,700 followers. Uh, yeah, I don't really pay. I've made literally millions off of Facebook, so I haven't really pushed on any other platform. So is Facebook your main one? Um, well, it was now that I've gone into NFTs, I've had to move into Twitter and Discord because that's where NFTs live. But all yes, right. for the last like five years where I was doing all this and doing my coaching program and, and everything like that, um, it was just Facebook and Facebook groups. Facebook groups. That's what I was going to say. So Facebook groups, was it Funnel Geeks? Was that your, was that your Facebook group you had? Uh, well, it used to be Funnel Doc. I actually uh, gave it to someone else to take over because I had such a powerful community in there, people that love funnels so much. I felt bad just destroying <laughs> it when I changed my brand, so I gave it to someone else. All right, okay. So the business that you won the Two Comma Club, your first one, that was fun the Funnel Doc. Is that yes, ma'am. Okay, so do you want to ex explain exactly what that was to our listeners? Sure. Uh, yeah, I originally started out as a personal trainer, actually. I was... Um, this was roughly about, gosh, it's been five, almost six years ago. It goes so fast, but <laughs> yeah, I was a personal trainer for 18 years of my life. I was actually in the military before I was a medic with the special forces with the Marines, did that for like four years, got out and then did 18 years of personal training. Um, and then, uh, I one day was studying under this gentleman named Bedros Koulian and he held up this random book, uh, dot com secrets from some dude, Russell Brunson and, <laughs> You know, like any good student, if your mentor tells you to read a book, you read it, right? And uh, it's the funniest thing is all the studying for sales and trying to figure out how to position my personal training brand online and that stuff, because that's when, you know, at that time, a lot of businesses were really trying to move online about, you know, six, seven years ago now, yeah. um, especially with online marketing. And when I read this book, it felt like uh, the first time Neo ever saw The Matrix in the movie The Matrix, where he could see all the ones and those like upsells, funnels, <laughs> websites are dead, funnels of the future. I'm like, this is it. Russell Brunson knows it. I'm going all in on this stuff. And that's when I actually got this funnel hacker <laughs> tattoo right here. Uh, this I actually got April 4th before I ever got uh, 2016, before I ever got any of these. This was a commitment to myself that I'd do something great with ClickFunnels or be a click, some weirdo with a ClickFunnels tattoo. And luckily it was the first, not the latter. And long story short, um, 
wind up making a bunch of funnels for people, launching a agency. Agency did really, really well. Uh, all together, all the funnels I created did over 41.7 million in four years. I gave all that up because I got tired of running an agency after two years because I felt like I had 13 different bosses when I had 13 different funnels I was making for people. Shifted into coaching, uh, did that for two years, coaching people how to build ecosystems, promote and, and do all the marketing and everything I did. Uh, my last eight clients all hit 10K within 30 days and four of those eight did 100K between 80 to 122 days. And one of those went on to do just shy of half a million in her first year. In her previous year, she did 32,000 uh, the year right. before that. So, um, and now I've given all that up and uh, saw the future in NFTs. And long story short, here we are. And I, I'm all in on NFTs now. All right. Okay. So when you had the funnel, Docker, that was a yes, funnel agency. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. So when you had that, were you going for the two comma club award? Was that a goal? Yeah. Oh yeah. As first, when I first saw it, it definitely was, but I think like probably a lot of people may be watching this. It was that goal, but it's more like a pie in the sky. Thing. At that time, I never thought, I mean, realized before I did the first, this is part of the story. Uh, when I first did my first comma, uh, two comma award, I was actually married at the time. And my wife and I, things had gotten really bad. Uh, I was trying to figure out this whole digital marketing thing. I was buying every course we could, putting everything, we were maxing out credit cards, trying to expand my education so I could move from the space of a personal trainer into digital marketing. I was taking like Ryan Dice's digital marketing courses, all types of stuff like that. Um, and she was uh, doing a lion's share of the work. I had a side gigs and stuff like that, but like a lot of the income was coming from her and overnight she lost her job at no fault to her. So we went from paycheck to paycheck to no check to no check. And like most people, you know, especially most people don't have a savings. It's sad, but it's true. I think it's something like 70 or 80% don't have more than a couple months savings. We had like no savings. So next thing you know, rent's due it's 1200 bucks we have to literally pawn my wife's wedding wedding ring just to pay rent and the sad thing was we could only get 800 for it so we had literally had to borrow another 400 from my parents it's like the most embarrassing time in my life and then i'm still doing this funnel hack trying to figure out this click funnels thing and i was actually uh the group was at 32,000 when i first started and i figured the best way to learn click funnels was to teach others and help others so I'd spend anywhere from six to eight hours a day in the group, just helping people with funnels, learning it, teaching it. And then one day, Kevin David, the guy that I did the first funnel did, puts a post in the group, he needs help with his funnels. And everybody just starts tagging me like, Jeff, 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 he's the guy, he's the guy's guy. <laughs> and that's led, and the first time I'll never get it, he, we, we worked out a deal. I made out his messenger bots, his emails, his all of his funnels, basically everything but the webinar and the course I made um, and Kevin at the time paid me six grand to do it on it. At that time, I'm like, baby, we're rich. We're getting to bring out a pond. We're going out to dinner at Red Lobster. Woo, baby, we are loaded. You know, at that time, 6000 when you're that broke is a life-changing money, you know? And uh, then the rest sort of was history, you know? All right. Okay, cool. So let's, so your tattoo, when did you get your tattoo? Uh, April 4th, 2016, before I ever did anything. Oh, was it? So yeah, it was literally before I ever got my first two comma. It was me committing that I was going to go all in on funnels. This was me going, hey, you're either going to do something great or be a freaking weirdo because <laughs> nobody has a click funnels tattoo. So luckily, uh, the first happened and not the second. Has anybody else got a click funnels tattoo? No, I, not that I know of. I, not that I know of. I'm the only person like in the world. So uh, luckily, I was able to do something with it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I want to do a little rewind and I want to yeah, take you back take you back to your childhood. Okay. What was your childhood like? Um, I mean, I had uh, my parents, great parents. Uh, my mom divorced when I was younger, but then married again when I was about eight to 10-ish. I don't know the exact year now. Um, and the dad that I've had since then has been an amazing man. He's been a great dad. I love him to death. They're still together now. They were just in town. I'm in Las Vegas. They came and visit me just like yesterday. Um, we were middle income, you know, sort of lower even income um, family. You know, we, we never were in need, but we were never in excess by any means either. You know, and my, my mom and dad, uh, you know, looking back, there's some things now that I look at my parents as an adult. And I'm like, oh, that's where that comes from. You know what I mean? Like, it's <laughs> so, but they, they did the best.
best, you know, they did the best they could. And, um, you know, I, I love my parents' death and, and I, you know, owe everything getting to this spot from them helping to raise me. So when you were a child, what was your dream? What did you want to grow up? What did you want to be when you grew up? Um, well, I wanted to be a professional beach volleyball player. So I actually did that for a couple of years. I was down in San Diego. My one, other than having the Guinness Book World Record with click funnels for the largest ever human bubble soccer game that we set that in Boise. Um, my other claim to fame is back in the day, the guy Karch Cry with a pink hat. I don't know if you follow beach volleyball. I actually, during the Super Bowl during 89, I believe it's 89 San Diego. Uh, Jose Cuervo made a uh, actual beach volleyball tournament downtown, uh, down in downtown San Diego, and I played in an exhibition match against the the greatest volleyball player of ever. So All right. Was, yeah. So, so cool. did you? Is that where you grew up, San Diego? No, I moved there after I got out of the military. I, uh, All right. Okay. I went to boot camp in San Diego. So did you go to college then after school? No, you're going to find this funny. So. Um, in high school, I had we had six periods, and fifth period was lunch, and we had an open campus so you could leave. Um, so I had a bad tendency to not come back after that for the last class, <laughs> which happened to be economics. So the, we come to the end of the year, and I'm not going to pass high school if I don't pass economics. So my counselor's talking to my teacher, and he talks him to let me take what's called the college level equivalency exam, or CLEP is what it's called. It's basically economics entrance college level exam he's like if he can pass this he can get him a, i'll give him a, a passing grade whatever he makes on this test i'll give him he's because he's exact words is like there's no effing way and i'm a 16 i'm what 18 year old kid he's like to my face he's like there's no effing way that you miss that much of my class and you'll even pass this thing so i go to take this test they have the guidance counselor sit in there to watch me to cheat on a year-long college test how would you cheat on that i don't know but anyway so long story short, I take this test. I wind up getting a 90 on it. I literally <laughs> like, like almost aced the thing. Um, I want that I come out the guidance counselor. I'll never forget his name was Mr. Gray. The, the teacher comes out and he looks at me. And he's like, you're one lucky SOB. And I'm like, what are you, what are you, what? And this teacher's, I'm a you know, 18 year old kid. And this teacher's talking to me like this. The guidance counselor, Mr. Bradbury <laughs> comes out and he's like, all right, you passed economics. You don't have to go to that class anymore. So long story short, I'm telling this because I, after I get out of the military, I decide to go to college. I go to apply for my transcripts and they're like, um, well, you didn't graduate high school. And I'm like, well, what do you mean I didn't graduate? I have a diploma, I, wa I walk, I graduate high school, I pass. They're like, no, you were credit short because of economics. So there was something, at one so long story short, I don't even have a high school diploma. All right, okay, but you did actually <laughs> do it. You did do it, but they, they Right. So I did, but something happened. And that was the funny thing. I'm like, I have a, a diploma and they're like, yeah, you could have faked that. I'm like, um, so I'm like, okay. So literally the th I've done all this now with technically not even a high school diploma. So you went to, what did you do in the military? How long were you in the military for then? Uh, four years. I was a medic with second force recon out of Camp Lejeune, which is a um, sort of special forces unit. All right. Okay. So after four years, what did you do then? Uh, I got out and because I'd, I used to be in really, really good shape after being in the military and because we worked out so much back in 2000 or 1996 when I got out, my buddy was running a, he was a general manager for a 24 hour fitness. Um, and back then you didn't need certifications. He's like, Jeff, you're in really good shape. You know how to work out. Do you want to be a personal trainer? So I wind up getting all the top certifications. I wind up being the top salesperson um, all over our district. I wind up running mini gyms. And for 18 years, I was a personal trainer, general manager, fitness director from everything from the UFC gym all the way to 24 hour fitness, LA fitness, as well as my own personal training uh, business, which led me to funnels and everything. All right. Okay. So you were doing it for the gym and you're doing it for yourself initially for the gym and then later on I that entrepreneur blood of wanting to do my own I've always been entrepreneur I sold Cutco knives when I was a kid trying to make money for anybody there's probably a lot of people know about that but I've always tried to want to be in my own business and after so many years being running gyms and everything for people and, and I, I wanted to branch out and run my own and that's when I started doing more one-on-one -on -one personal training and trying All to run right. my own business which led to this Okay, so who was the mentor you said that gave you the book dot com secrets then? Uh, Bedros Koulian is his name. Bedros Koulian. All right. Okay, so 
what was he then was he in the fitness space or yeah he was teaching people at that time um how to do on uh, how to position yourself um online so that you could do marketing and sales how to structure sales pages copy all that basic sales for fitness and marketing all right okay so when you got the book yeah what did you do next after you got the book how did you implement that for your gym for your personal training well um I'm an all-in type of guy. So um, at that point, I decided, yeah, that was it. So as soon as I read the book, I started going in the group and I started getting every type of course or instruction or YouTube. I literally would fall asleep watching Russell Brunson videos on my keyboard. I'd wake up and I'd hit the play button again. Like I literally, I probably, you know, they say you need like 10,000 hours to master something. I probably did that in my first month. Like literally that I would eat, breathe and sleep marketing and funnels that's all I would think about and um it, it wind up being successful thank goodness so did you stop doing your personal training then um yeah pretty much like I was still doing it see that was my side gig is like I had a guy that I was doing training at his house so I was making like 600 bucks a month but that's right. more of a side hustle that's not a real income you know what I mean so that was I one of the things when my wife lost her job that was a majority of our money and stuff. So things got really tough at that point. But yeah, I was doing side stuff, but it was more at that point, I was like, that was just to help pay the bills where I could figure out how, to, because I wanted to be a digital marketer. I saw the future that funnels were the future, websites were dead, and that this was going to be the way people would be marketing in the future. And I right. saw the way. Okay. So you were in the Facebook group. What Facebook group were you in? Did you create your own then, or were you in the ClickFunnels Facebook group? Yeah, it was the ClickFunnels Facebook group. At that time, uh, it was March 16th, 2016 when I joined. Uh, you know, you can look back and you see when it tells you when you joined on there. And there was only 32,000 people in the group at that time. All right. Okay. Yeah, because it's like 250,000 or something. something like yeah. That, so Kevin David. So who is Kevin David then? What was he? What was he promoting when you came? He was teaching. A, he's a YouTuber and ecom guy. He does. Um, at the time, he was teaching how to do a uh, FBA or fulfillment by um, Amazon. All right. So how to sell on Amazon, an Amazon course, and then the other one. This one's for um, a course on uh, Shopify. All right. Okay. So you didn't know him. He just posted in the Facebook group asking for somebody to help him. Yeah. I didn't even know who he was. I had no clue. When people start tagging him, they're like, yeah, this guy. So I like Googled him. At that time, he only had one video that was still amazing. He had 250,000 views on it, but his following was much less than it is now. I think his channel's got a couple million. And I'm honored to say his most viewed video is the one we did together where we went and fed the homeless veterans for Christmas. It has almost 5 million views on it. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. It was a, it's one of the most things I'm the most proud of. It's, it's, it's awesome. So when he when he when he posted that, was he asking for a specific funnel? Did he know what he wanted, or did he want you to help him create it? No, literally the post was like, I wish I'd saved it. Is it one of the it's like I didn't know at that time, you know what it like be anything. But um, at that time, it was just basically I need help with funnels. Who can help me? And because I'd been in the group, just helping everybody, just start tagging me because like literally. I would jump on Zoom calls with people. I would do whatever. People didn't know the answer. They're lazy. I'd Google it and find it out or whatever and go tell, you know, because like look, there's this magic thing out there, people called Google that will tell you almost every answer if you research enough. Oh, crazy, right? But, but yeah. Um, so, but that was the thing. I was like, for me, I figured the best way to master something is to be able to teach others. When you can teach others, that's when you really internalize something. So that was my path. And um, then in June of that year, that was the first time Facebook ever put out where you could do the top 10 contributors of a group. And the group um, from March to June had went from 35,000 to 72,000. And they put out, uh, I was the second highest contributor to the group out of 72,000 people. Yeah, um, wow. And I don't know if you know who Julie Stoyan is. She used to be big in the ClickFunnels group. She was number yeah. five on that list. So that tells oh, you wow. something about it. <laughs> and that's my little brag. Uh, Julie, I love you. So if you're watching this, you know, you know that. But I just, that, that's my one thing I got on you. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you create then? What was that first funnel you created for Kevin David? Uh, that was a uh, webinar style funnel. That was for his uh, Amazon, how to uh, sell on Amazon. It was a fulfillment by Amazon or Amazon FBA, where you're able to find other, um, other items at a lower price and then arbitrage them or sell them at a higher price on Amazon. So was it a live webinar that you 
created or? Uh, no, it was, it, Kevin is, uh, is an amazing uh, entertainer or whatever you want to say. Cause like we shot the webinar one time and it was perfect. You know what I mean? And like, you don't do that. I made many, 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 many webinars. And sometimes it's months of fine. First time we shot it, it was just like, I'm that, that's it, dude. We're good. We don't need anything. So, and uh, yeah. And then he'd shot all the course himself where for one month, he's like, I'm going in a hide and shut everything down. You didn't see him for 30 days. And he came back out and he had this amazing course that he'd created and the rest sort of his history. All right, cool. So after that happened then, what what happened? How did you create Funnel Doc then from because had you created that then or not when you did that first one? <laughs> no, that um came up, I think, uh like after my second two comma actually. I used to be a medic with the Marines, so doc medic. And I was like, well, if you because I have an agency, I'm like, well, if your funnels are, are sick, I can make them better. You know, I'm the, I'll make your funnels better. You know, I'm funnel doc. <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget because the first time I ever did it was at Funnel Hack, the second time I'd ever been to Funnel Hacking Live, which was 2019. And there was like 5,000 people there. And I never done anything like that. And to be honest, I was scared. I'm like, are people going to laugh at me? Here's the, I'm six foot five. So you see How me you? everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm six foot five, about 220. And all of a sudden I'm wearing this bright ass lab coat, you know what I mean? And they're like, who's the dude? Why? And luckily uh, it wound up growing in one of the greatest branding things I'd ever done because I would have people that come up to me. They're like, I don't know who you are, but you're the funnel doc, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was really amazing. And then uh, it's been such a blessing just over the years, man, to even now have people that have been like, I've been following you for like the last five years. You've helped impact me so much. And some of my other tattoos I have in here is this one says income and impact, because I think they're the two most important things. It's hard to change the world without money, you know? And so that's the thing. I, 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 I think that one of the great blessings I've had doing all this was the amount of people that have come to me and told me how much I've influenced them or gave them inspiration for my story. So, um, and it's one of the greatest things. It really yeah, is. that's great. So when you, got your second one you created funnel doc mm -hmm. how did you start getting clients through that oh i mean i had clients right as soon as i got my first two comma we launched my agency in december our first month we did eighteen thousand. Second month was like 32 45 58 uh we did just shy eight hundred thousand our first year so how, how did you get your clients then how, for they people listening begging. I mean, realize at that time I was the fastest to hit a million. No one had hit a million faster than me. Right. So the people were hunting you out. Oh yeah. It was, it was ridiculous. Like it was, I mean, like, yeah, I've, um, I've, I've been very blessed that because of the results that I've been able to give people, I've never really had to search for clients. So what was your magic? What was your little bit of magic then that, uh, Made that happen. One of the biggest things that people don't understand is when you do, like before, when I was a personal trainer and I told you I was always one of the top salespeople and everything, one of the reasons why, when you sit down and you're face to face, I'm able to ask you questions and pull those answers out of you and walk you down a journey to the end is buying whatever I'm selling you makes sense because of the answers you've given me. Makes sense, right? Right. The problem is, with a funnel, we don't have this back and forth. So I have to do the research and come up with the, the journey ahead of time. So a well done funnel takes someone that knows nothing about a product. And by the time they're done with it, they're like, yes, I'm a fan of this. Please, where can I buy it? I need it now, you know? Yeah. And that's the biggest problem is people so often when they make funnels, they make the, the, the product the star. The product's not the star. The person reading the funnel is the star. They're the ones that need the problem, that need to understand and identify with the journey you're putting them on, where you talk about their pain points and how this product is going to be able to solve them and take them from where they are now, where it totally sucks, to where the future is going to be one of the greatest things because all their problems are going to be solved because of this. I mean, in the simplest way. <laughs> but there's a lot of psychology involved, too. I've spent hundreds... Well, probably not hundreds of thousands, but definitely tens of thousands on dollars on marketing psychology and understanding the thought process and how people need to feel a sense of status and, and, and wealth and, and influence. And then if you can make them feel or FOMO that they're not getting those, then all of a sudden they feel that they need something, you know, so. Okay, so did you build a team then when you had Funnel Doc? 
So that was funny. Great question. Uh, initially, for the first probably couple hundred grand, I was pretty much doing it all on my own. Like I was a solopreneur. I didn't know. And this is the thing that sucks. Like I run gyms before. I've been manager, but there's a big difference running someone's biz other business and running your own business. Like I had no clue what I was doing. Like I'm going to be like, I made, I, I made so many mistakes. Like one time I hired one of my best friends because I thought he'd be able to help me out because I was getting overwhelmed from everything. Um, and because I didn't have everything, long story short, stipulated exactly what his requirements were in the contract, I lost $70,000. Whoa. Yeah, like literally. And on top of that, because this we weren't able to fulfill because I thought this person was going to help me, I winded up not able to fill on contracts and winded up losing another 120 on contracts just because I wasn't able to fulfill on them. Once I figured all that out, I started building out my own team. By the end of it, I had an operations manager. I wasn't even doing my own marketing. I had a person. I wasn't doing even the funnels. I haven't made my own funnel in like years now. Like I have a design guy that I send it off. Like I'll outline it and I send it off to my design guy and he makes everything look pretty. You know what I mean? So um, I wind up having a copywriter person, ads team, social media person. Um, I think at one point, our, our biggest team only got up to like 12 people, but it averaged between about six to eight. All right. Okay. So when you were doing it all yourself, what was, what was your favorite bit that you did? The funnels and the marketing, you know, the, 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 the I like creating businesses and, and structures to support those. I really like ecosystems. Right. So think of a product and the ecosystem to be able to market and support it and sell it and then be able to deliver it to everyone. I'm weird. I like, I don't like finish. This is one of my problems. I don't like finishing as much as I, like the initial starting and building. And then I sort of have to hand it off to a team and let them, because that's not me. But that initial setup of creating and, and figuring it out and all that cool, I get, that's my, that's my, that's one of the things I love. But it's also one of my curses because I'll get sidetracked because all of a sudden I'll get this, what I call a shiny opportunity. It's not a shiny object. It's a shiny opportunity because can you make money from it? Sure. But when you look at your end goal, is it really get you to your end goal? Or is it sort of diverting your actual attention? So often I get these shiny opportunities that would, would like distract me from what I was trying to accomplish with it. But you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> So what was the main was what was the main traffic sources that you used on the two on the two comma clubs awards? Um, well, we had a majority of um, we had organic. Well, the OK, so the first two was a lot of ads and a lot of email and then a little bit of some organic because he had, he had a decent YouTube following by that time. So it was probably about three hundred thousand on his YouTube channel. Right. Okay. So those were the main ones. Uh, it was really a lot more organic. We didn't have a lot of uh, ad spend. I think of the first million, it was only probably like ten percent was ads. All right. Okay. So it was a profitable funnel as well. Oh yeah, I've never not. Well, that's not true. I have had probably three or four funnels that didn't work out for people out of the twenty or well, more like thirty that I made. All right. Okay. So. How long did you, when did you, when did you, ha did you say you handed over Funnel Doc to somebody else or did you just close it Yeah, down some guys wanted to take over. I had some other guys that were uh, funnel people that were in the ClickFunnels group and I just put out a post. I was like, hey, is anybody ever interested in taking over the group? Because um, I don't, there's a lot of people that are as a good, it was a good group and I felt bad just destroying it after all the years I'd put into it, building it. So um, yeah, gave it over to some other people and I believe they're doing well with it, but to be honest with you, on Funnel Hacking Live this year, I've been made a big announcement that the Funnel Doc brand was dead, and I literally destroyed everything related to the Funnel Doc, and I don't pay attention to anything that's not NFTs now. Okay, so what happened that made you decide to do that? Sure. Um, my coaching business, I was doing really, really well with. Uh, I was my minimum package was my uh, ninety day package was ten k. My year long package was thirty grand, um, and I was doing really well. One of my new clients came to me and he needed help launching an NFT, so he wanted to be able to build an ecosystem. And then also, I have massive connections with people, so he wanted to be able to use all my connections with influencers to help promote it. Um, 
I didn't know anything. I know about crypto and I heard about NFTs, but I didn't know anything about it. So to be a good coach, I figured I needed to start researching this to be able to sort of help him out to understand it. And like every time I was doing anything about NFTs, I was like, or anything that was click funnels, I was like, dude, I need to be doing NFT stuff. I started more and more and more. Started, I'm like, this is the future how everything will be bought and sold online. Like literally every digital, digital asset in the future will be an NFT. And just like I saw funnels were dead or websites are dead, funnels are the future. I'm like, I'm, I'm an all in type of guy. So I just gave up everything and like, I'm going all in on this. And uh, that's been the journey up to now. All right. Okay. So when was that then? When did you, when did you make that decision? Uh, it started uh, April around beginning of April last year. So it's only been just over a year now. All right. Okay. So NFTs, do you want to explain what they are? Because I don't really know what they are. And I'm sure yeah, lots of sure. people listening won't have a clue. Yeah, no, it's it's one of the most <laughs> ununderstood technologies because people see pictures and they're like, oh, you're just buying a picture or something. And really the picture is just a placeholder. It could be anything. It could be a video. It could be a picture. It could be music. It could be literally anything. What an NFT actually is on the simplest form is the tracking of a digital asset on what's called the blockchain. So for instance, if you buy something, it's now being able to track and there's to be able to see who bought it, what did they bought it for and who owns it? Like it, on the simplest thing, it's really not that complicated. The magic is what you can do with them. So imagine this, you're a musician, okay? You have a small following of 50,000 fans that are diehard fans, they love you. And we know 50,000, that's nothing. Like 50,000, like let's be honest, 50,000 in music, that's, that's like nothing, right? Like we're talking usually people have millions, but let's say you have 50,000 diehard fans. You decide you're gonna launch an NFT and whoever buys this NFT is not only going to help you support you, but they're going to get a royalty from any music that you put forward on this album that you're going to create using the money that you get from these NFTs. Does that make sense so far what I'm saying? Right. Okay. So now you decide that you're going to do 10,000 of these for a thousand bucks. So you need uh, one out of every five people. So only 10,000 out of your 50,000 people to give you a thousand bucks to be able to get one of these NFTs. You just made right there $10 million. And now as an artist, you don't need a record label to promote you. You're able to promote yourself, launch your own album, do your own promotion, do your own tour, everything you need to do. And now as a diehard supporter of you, because I love you so much, I actually sort of own a piece of your business. And every time you do a download or wherever you make money, depending on how it's set up, I'll get automatically a royalty from it sent to me on the blockchain. That's All just right. one of the amazing... Another way, in Florida recently, they just sold the first NFT house. Whoever owns it actually owns a property. So it's like an access portal. Another way that I'm doing it, I'm launching a coaching program. Whoever owns the NFT gets access to the coaching program. But here's the cool thing about, about education. Have you ever bought courses before? Yeah. I've got, I don't know about you, but I probably got about 30K over the last five years in courses that were great at the time, but are garbage to me now because once you go through them, you really don't need them anymore. Yeah. NFTs allow you, imagine this, the last course you bought, let's say it's 997. Instead of you buying it online, you buy it as an NFT. You now own that course. When you're done with it, you can actually resell that NFT for someone else to get access to that course for what you paid for or potentially even more. So you're going to be at for the first time because of NFTs being able to pay to learn. Okay, so you could... It's an access portal. Right, but what about the original person that... You, is that taking money away Here's from the great them? Thing. Here's the great thing. The first person that makes it is able to hard bake into the code a royalty. The standard's anywhere from five to 10% with 7.5 being the average, but you as a creator, so let's look at that house. Let's say that house was a million dollars. If you're the creator of the NFT that made the initial one, you would get 10% of that. So every time it's sold for a million, you'd get a hundred grand just sent to you just because. That makes generational wealth because you're now able to transfer that NFT to your family, whoever, and now you're, imagine if you had 10 of those. All right. Okay. See, you're starting to get it a little bit. There's a, <laughs> no, what you really real, see, that's the one thing people don't understand the real power behind it. They see it as a JPEG. 
there's an art part to it, but that's only like 10% of what NFTs are is, is an art, you know, or someone wanting to flex. Look at me. I spent a couple hundred grand on this thing, just like buying a Lambo. It's the same thing. I bought a hundred thousand dollar NFT. The, the real sauce is those other 90% that are what we call utility-based NFTs. By when you own it, you get some type of, as a marketer, we think of them as bonuses. You know, when you look at a, a webinar and you see that stack, yeah. that's sort of like what an NFT has to it automatically. Oh, when you own this, you're going to get this and this and this and this. And that's where the real value from NFTs come is, is the ability to actually own a digital asset. For you to be when you, because think about all the courses you bought, you never really owned them. You were only, if they shut it down, you didn't get access anymore. Now you do, you own that and have the ability to be able to sell it to someone else when you're done with it. Because also when you make an NFT, there's a limited amount of them. So as the course creator, let me say, I want to make a million dollars for my course, a thousand and a thousand is a million. So I make a thousand NFTs, sell them, make a million dollars. The cool thing is if you want to access my course, the only way you can get it is from one of those thousands, supply and demand. So you could literally sell them for more than it was, what you actually paid for it when you're done with it potentially. Right. Okay. I see. So your new, so your new business, what are you actually doing? Are you doing it for other people or what are you doing? Teaching so people I have how two, to use it? Uh, two verticals. One's of course, like always, I've always done coaching programs and education. So I'm teaching people the ins and outs. One of the things over the last year, um, being very successful in what we call the Web 2 space or this space in the, the NFTs are considered what we call Web 3. Um, learning how to market in the Web 3, sure, some of the things that are fundamental always work when it comes to marketing. But there are a lot of things that worked in Web 2 that when you tried in Web 3, you fell flat on your face. I mean, literally, it was like made some big mistakes trying to figure out some things over the last year. But now that I figure all those out and uh, ma not master, but become really well at the techniques that need to be doing for a successful campaign, I have my whole education side where I have a 90 day coaching program teaching people how to launch your NFTs with the full money back guarantee, by the way, if you don't like it at 45 days, I'll give you your money back. So who's that so. aimed at then people who have got a course and they want to, for example, and say they want to make NFTs for it or. That's a, so any really it's anyone that has something roughly over $400 that want to figure out how to sell it as an NFT. Right. Okay. Or they just have an idea and they want to learn how they can convert that idea in a potential NFT. So it's literally it's how to design, create, promote, launch and uh, monetize your NFT. And then my whole other vertical is I have a whole agency. We have dev team and all those to everything you need for to launch an NFT where, do you know, Steve Larson? Yeah. So Capitalist Pig, um, we're launching his NFT in 45 days, actually. We're oh, doing right. Capitalist, okay. uh, yeah, my agency is the one that's handling all that. So as you see over the next 45 days, we start, you'll see uh, tons of Capitalist Pig promotion coming up. That's going to be my whole agency. And then there's another g gentleman, Gabe Schillinger and Adrian Wood. They're uh, two comic club winners. Yeah, Gabe actually spoke on Funnel Hacking Live. I believe it was two years ago. Um, it might have been last year. Um, and we're launching the first ever decentralized record label where the nft holders are going to be able to actually create the tracks and control how the record is released and produced right okay exciting stuff then yeah we're trying to be innovators and creators in the space it's too new to be copying and pasting people so we're trying to do stuff that's never been done before you know like it's so much power to think that i can give for the first time ever the power back I know this sounds cheesy, but the power back to the people, you know what I mean? Like you're good. You get to have control. Now you get voting privileges. You get to control where money goes. You also get some of the money potentially, you know, it's amazing times. So how are you promoting, how are you promoting your new, your new, your new group then? How are you getting people in to find uh, well, out? I'm actually going to start promoting that. To, uh, there's only a hundred spots and it's, it's really inexpensive. It's, it's actually a $10,000 coaching program which my whitelist, it's 500 bucks to get in my public sale, which the whitelist you think of as a VIP list. It's, it's people to get like special access at a reduced price. Um, and then the public sale, it's only be a grand. So it's literally a 90 day pro coaching program where myself and I have three other coaches and an accountability coach, full course laid out. There's weekly coaching programs or re weekly coaching sessions, Q and A, everything you'd have in a regular $10,000 coaching program. But because I haven't 
had a success with it yet. Yeah. I'm literally giving it for the price of a course now. Mind you, the next 90 days, I'm tripling prices because I know I'm going to have several people that will do a million dollars. I'm actually making my own version of the, fun, the Two Comma Club called the Nifty Award or NFT Award, <laughs> uh, where I'm going to be awarding people for hitting six and seven figures. I'm also doing a big, massive party here in Las Vegas where we're going to have an award ceremony and we're doing a two-day event. I'm going to be renting out a big mansion for everybody, and we're going to have all special events for all the for the NFT holders. It's uh, it's literally if anyone wants to get NFT, it's like the the it's I mean, and on top of all that, like I said, if for any reason you get to the 45-day mark and you don't like it, I'll buy your NFT back because I'll sell it to somebody else. I don't care, you know. Like, um, how are you? How are you promoting it though? What are you it's using? Be a all organic. Are you be, using I a funnel? A yeah, I have such a following. I mean, not to like, please don't take it that way. Um, but I have enough people that know who I am that I should be able to easily sell a hundred NFTs at fifty or five hundred bucks for fifty of them and a thousand for fifty. So you, so you don't need to run ads or anything like that. No, oh, no, I won't run ads. And how, ads don't you, work you, in you, NFTs. Ads don't you, work in NFTs. Right. That's one of the things I learned. Ads for NFTs. For the people in Web3, when they see them, they don't trust them. Like, they don't work. Everything has to be organic. Collaborations with other influencers, finding other people that are in the NFT space. That's one of the biggest mistakes people, when they're moving in NFTs, make when it comes to marketing. So my one of my biggest things we had in my first try to launch NFT is when I was in the coaching space and I was advising this guy. We had people with millions of followers. The problem is... 0.0001% of a million of followers even know what an NFT is, let alone want to buy it. So we went into it thinking, oh, you've got a million people. We'll teach them what NFT. They'll all come running. Oh, we want your NFT. Doesn't work that way. The way you do it now is you have to go to other audiences where people already understand the tech and then show them the magic of what your NFT and the value of what it is. Because once they see it, they'll come. For instance, uh, Snoop Dogg just released the first ever NFT album. It was 17 tracks and it was $5,000 for the NFT. He did 44 million in like 30 minutes. And I guarantee you, there were tons of people that bought that NFT that don't even like rap, but they <laughs> understand the value of that NFT. Right. That's one of the things when we were talking to Steve originally, he was worried. He was like, well, I don't know if my audience realized only 20% of to 30% of your sales will come from your actual core audience. The other 80 to 70 comes from the NFT world that understand it. Because just like we've done here, I think goodness has been able to educate you a lot. But before, you might have heard of them, but you didn't. You wouldn't spend your money on it. But now you might be a little curious where you might not spend a lot, but you might dabble a little to get a little access to something. Yeah, definitely. I think you've educated everyone and our listeners on more that's about awesome. them that's yeah. that's that's the coolest thing because it, it sucks because uh i was just getting um i have a yearly checkup i'm getting a little older so i went to my doctor and he's like hey you're back in town what are you doing now and i'm like oh i have a full a a nft agency and he's like oh like like literally like the <laughs> disgust in his voice i could feel it come across <laughs> the room and i and i asked him and i was like you know i'm not gonna try and sell you or anything but just curious what about it and I talked to him for like two minutes and it was just an un, in, a misinformed person. He just, let's be honest, right now you either see people making a crap ton of money or it's a scam. That, it's one or the other. That's what you see right now. Yeah. And we, let's be honest, when people see a crap ton of money, they think it's laundering or some other thing that's going on. But my best analogy is this. When the first Model T Ford cars came out back in the day and people were riding horses, People thought the people driving cars worshiped the devil. So what does everybody drive now? Nobody hardly rides a horse. It's the same type of thing. People just don't understand the technology yet. Yeah. So what do you think has been your biggest hurdle in your entrepreneurial journey so far? Um, you know, it's one of the things I've actually turned into one of my, my uh, strengths was building a team. And that's why I teach in my coaching program as well, because, uh, I didn't know anything running a business initially. I was just guessing, you know, I'd, I'd run my own little side hustle business, but that's not running a multi-million dollar brand with team and people. Like, I didn't understand how to find people, how to hire them. And then I didn't understand how to lead them, to be honest with you. I didn't understand how to run a business initially. And it cost me a lot of money. But now, you know, I've been able to figure that out, thank goodness. But yeah, that was the biggest thing is, 
you know, I'd run my own business, but that's, uh, yeah, I just running a business and, and, and not being a solopreneur, you know? Yeah. And um, has there ever been a time where you thought about giving up? Oh, yes. So many times, even with this, it's scary. You have people talk bad about you and it, and like, it doesn't matter how much people say good. It's that one person that stands out that said that one mean thing that sticks in your gut, you know? Um, yeah, there's been, first of all, when I first started, when it got so bad and we were losing, we had no money and my wife lost her job. Like I was at that point, I'm like, do I go get a job at like Taco Bell or something just to pay bills? Or do I try and figure it out, you know? And then when the business, when it first happened and we were doing so well, but then I got overwhelmed because it was me running it. And I had 13, it went literally in less than two weeks. I went from having four clients to 13 clients and it was all me running everything. <laughs> that's yeah, crazy. that's crazy. Right. <laughs> Stupid, but that was, it is, okay, it's called learning. My bad, you know, um, it was just hard realize as a personal trainer and stuff, the most I ever made was like 30 or 40 grand a year. And that's what we were charging per funnel at one point. So it got really hard to be able to turn that down when people are, and I got to point too, because I was doing so well, people are literally begging to work with me. And I'm just like, Oh, okay. And then next thing you know, it's all like, Oh my gosh, there's dead. It's all happening. And then I made the mistake of not, setting expectations for people when I hired them and lost that 70 grand. And I've had ad problems with people. Like I've had multiple problems with staff, you know, just because I didn't understand. And one of the things now that I really teach people to incorporate is realize that um, even though you're running a business, the people in it are people and you really need to understand what drives them and motivates them because that's, what's going to allow you to create a good business. It's going to create like movement within because we always think a lot of times it's money, but I've talked to people before. It's like, dude, I just want to be able to buy a PlayStation next month or whatever, you know? And if you can facilitate that and get them to that goal quicker, whatever it is, you're enriching their lives. And that's what your job is as a boss is to be able to enrich their lives. Because this is what you realize is like, they're looking to you for everything. You're providing their livelihood to them. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, when you hire people, you have to think of that. Like these people are depending on you. If your business fails, they lose their job. Yeah, it's a it's a big it's a big thing looking after looking after your staff. I think a yeah. lot of people make mistakes when they first take on staff. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it's one of the hardest things. Just because sometimes you just don't understand what it takes to be able to to direct your team properly you know what I mean just being that leader to be able to to show them not only where they need help but also where they're they're highlighted too you know? yeah so do you have a morning routine that you do every day um I pretty much I'm I, I got out of it for a while I'm getting back into it I have been on it for about three weeks now working out in the morning again um, I was traveling a bunch and because of that, I was down in Mexico all over and I got out of working out. Um, but yeah, usually I'll get up, I'll go work out. I usually get up about five o'clock, go work out, shower. Um, I don't really, I usually don't, not intentionally, but I start working. So I sort of like fast, but don't mean to. And then so next thing you know, it'll be like 10 or 11 o'clock. Um, and then I'll usually eat about then and then work for the rest of the day. Um, about five or six of so I'll sort of shut down, watch some YouTube or something like that, maybe do some of my own stuff. Um, and that's, you know, a typical day I put in, yeah. you know. So yeah, do, you, do you do any sort of meditation or affirmations or anything like that? Um, I have a lot in the past, but I don't, I probably should get back into it. I probably should. I, I used to have like, a, um, what was the book called? Five, it was like the, the five minute, um, journal is a white book and you put in like morning affirmations and evening affirmation stuff it was really good but uh, no I haven't I probably should maybe it helped <laughs> me get some through some of my own mental barriers <laughs> right then I've got one last question for you yeah, yeah. if you're going to be an animal for 24 hours what would you be and why a black panther because they're sleek and powerful and just freaking cool looking, dude. Let's be honest. Like you see a black like that's pretty cool, you know? Um, so yeah, that's cool.
<laughs> you answered that super fast. <laughs> yeah, it's not like I haven't thought about it before, I think. <laughs> So I want to thank you so much for chatting to me today. Yeah, it's been great. It's been fun. If anybody wants to find out more about your NFTs, where do they need to go? Um, go to nftempiremaker.com. Nftempiremaker.com. Yep, that's okay. my thing. I want to teach everybody how to create their own empire. So if you go to NFT Empire Maker, you'll be able to see uh, the outline of everything that's going on, as well as I have my NFT for newbies group. So if you're super, super newbie, I have a group of almost 5,000 people on Facebook right now, uh, NFTs for newbies, where we teach you everything that you need to know to go from a newbie to a novice in a safe space. Because unfortunately, there are a lot of scams in crypto and stuff right now. You have to be careful. So we teach everyone what NFTs are, how they can apply them to business, and um, how to be safe. And then my graduation from that is to my empire maker. So we teach you all the newbie stuff. And then once they're ready to move on, my next step up is my empire maker. All right. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you for having me on. Great. Thank you for listening. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please take a moment to leave us a five-star review and subscribe to the podcast on your podcast software. It really helps us rank the podcast and get more listeners. And if you're over on YouTube, please subscribe and hit the bell. Every Friday, 8am GMT, we release a brand new episode. And until then, have a good one.